Hi, and welcome to Easy Fishing. Well, I finally got set up down by the river. I'm trying a new remote out for the camera with a pan and tilt in an effort to uh, provide better quality movies for everybody. So, um, I'm after tench primarily, but other big fish on uh, the species list would be big bream and enormous carp. So to that end, I have quite specialised tackle. The pole I'm using is a MIDI Muscle Tech. Uh, it's an extremely strong pole. I'm fishing at six metres long with uh, two metres of extensions to go with in case I hook one of the road carp. The end rig is also worth having a look at. So, a lot of you might think this is overkill, but trust me, this is necessary. So starting with the elastic, we have a size 22 solid. Um, 2.3 millimeters thick. Going down from that, we have a 10 pound Drennan Extra Tough. Now, uh, there's a lot of weed beds and stuff in here and the fish have a habit of charging through them. Suplex is nicer to fish with, but it's not as abrasion resistant. The float is a one gram Drennan Carp 3. And it's shotted with an Olivet held between two rubber float stops, three number eight droppers, a, the largest quick stop a size 12, uh, sorry, quick connector a size 12, going down to a hook length of 022 uh, suplex fluorocarbon to a size 12 Drennan wide gape specialist rigged with a bait band, hair rigged, because the bait is pellets. So all I'm going to do is mount a pellet in the band and even the pellet choice is, is uh, crucial. I'm using what is called a Coppins pellet. Now pellets come in two basic varieties, a Coppins which is a hard pellet and a Screttings which is a much softer pellet. Now it doesn't really that matter that much I suppose but I do like the uh, Coppins pellets. Now, these tactics and the way I'm fishing have been shaped by 30 years of targeting these big fish and they are big. I know uh, an acquaintance uh, showed me a photograph of a 38 pounder. He had up there on admittedly carp tactics. I've managed them to 22 on the pole and lost bigger. Um, I've had double figure bream and I've had tench to nine four. So we're not talking about small fish. What size we'll catch is anybody's guess, but I'll do my best. So, the other thing is to ensure that in deep water, that my hook bait is fishing exactly on top of my uh, free offerings, I'm introducing a tiny little PVA bag. just nicked onto the hair and that I'm going to dip in some glug. Um, I don't know if it really helps but I don't think it does any harm and I'm using uh, a Sonu Bates bait booster called Banoffee mainly because I like the smell. So just dunk it all in there have a good coating let the excess drip back I wouldn't let it drip on your clothes if I was you I don't unless you really like to attract every wasp and fly in the vicinity so there we have it ready to go dripping nicely so what we do is just pick the pole up the top sections
and ship it out to the required point in the swim. So, the rig's in position. It's now merely a case of waiting for some action. And uh, I don't know how long it'll be. It could be instant or it could take a while. Uh, the rowers look like they might be a problem as well, but we shall have to see. So the first rowers went straight through my swim with absolutely no consideration, but then that's normal. So I've not put another PVA bag on. I'm going to give it a little while before I do so. But I do get annoyed with uh, selfish rowers. They do tend to think they own the river, but never mind. Now, I realise um, that uh, viewers on YouTube have probably never seen a video using these sorts of tactics for catching tench. I certainly never have. Uh, the conventional thinking nowadays is all feeders with helicopter rigs, um, buzzers and bobbins. And it is very effective, but it doesn't work on here. Two reasons. One, the weed. If you cast out a uh, conventional bottom rig, oh dear, here comes another. Although this gear seems exceptionally heavy, exceptionally uh, heavy weed and snags and very big fish um, make this gear necessary. Hollow elastics, too much stretch. They'll see you straight into the nearest lily bed I've tried. Uh, brown hydro, they're straight in the lilies. So although the gear looks excessively heavy for the fish, etc., it is not. Right, well, here we are, first fish. But unfortunately, it's not the target species. It's, as I thought, a uh, smaller bream, which on this gear is going absolutely nowhere. But that's how it's designed to be. But I'm grateful. It's a fish. There we go. And the only thing is, when I set up, I realised I'd forgotten my uh, big landing net, so I'll be all right with the tench. But if I get one of those double-figure slabs or, or a 20-pound carp, I'm going to have a job getting it in the net. So that, <laughs> we have a lively uh, skimmer here. Now I'm not going to try and lift him up as he'll be out, but they are first fish of the night. Safely back in the water and slimed me up. Oh well, small price to pay. So, another eight millimeter pellet on the band. Small PVA bag. And into the glug she goes. Smells gorgeous. And it obviously doesn't put the fish off. It's just a bit messy. Much as I like the smell of banana, or banoffee as they call it, 
I don't really want to be covered in that, mind you, it might hide the smell of the bream. So. I should have put a uh, stop to hang the PVA bag on, but I forgot. Right, line it up exactly where I want it to go. And down she sinks. The only way you can be this accurate is with a dropper. Well, at the moment, I'm getting lots of little dips and lifts on the float. Um, and I guess that's being caused by skimmers. Uh, especially is because I had a, a smaller skimmer earlier. So I'm almost certain that is not the tinch. I'm pretty certain that's the shoulder skimmers out there. But I will persist. <coughs> so I've just added another number 10 shot in an effort to dock the float down even more and uh, redunked the hook in the uh, glug but I've resisted the temptation to put another PVA bag on if the bite stop and all indications then yes I will put another PVA bag on until that moment I will not let's get this rig in position I'm using a far bank marker to line it up exactly Let's uh, see what happens. Well, I'm getting a tremendous number of little dinks and bobs and whatever on the float, and I've got the float dotted right the way down. And first of all, I experimented by shallowing off by uh, the length of the bristle, and now I've gone deeper by the length of the bristle. So we're just trying to find out what gives the best depth to give a hittable bite because these bites are not hittable and I still suspect that they are small skimmers and stuff trying to take an eight millimeter pellet, but we shall see. Well, I'm still getting lots of little dips and lifts on the float, but as the light level um, decreases, I'm looking out for what I call bateau clock. And bateau clock is for me when I see the first signs of the bats flying around over the river because so many times that is coincided with me getting the tinch. So although I'm not catching at the moment, I don't feel unduly worried. And having said that, on cue I have a tinch. And already caught. I've got a feeling this might be Monsieur Le Cop, so... If it's not a carp, it's a big tinch. And I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but this pole is hooped over. There is... Just two section lengths of... 22 solid stretched right out and he's heading for the wheat beds oh and it's a big carp well not an enormous carp but a big one and yes I can see him right in front of me he's trying for the lily beds and he's ploughed straight through them and he's going some Oh! Well, that goes to show you the tactics are right. And I saw that carp, that was a carp of about high doubles. And uh, I don't know what's given. I'll have a look. Shame, because that was a very big fish. Still, never mind. Can't win them all. Yeah. And would you believe he snapped an eight pound hook length?
Well, there we go. But carp of that size in this sort of snag filled areas are extremely difficult to target. Even with so called running line cock gear, you would have had your work cut out with that one because he went through three lily beds and I think that's what did it, abraded the hook. He also ripped the stots off the line and moved the olivet down so um, that's why I use it. Uh, it's a shame I lost it because that was a uh, at least an upper double. I saw him clearly because <coughs> he charged through the lily beds under my feet. There you go, some you win, some you don't. So when you see how quickly I subdued that tench of about four pounds, you get an idea of what that carp was. So, let's go and see if I can try another one. And I'm gonna try an experiment. Um, Bait I've been meaning to experiment is uh, Dynamite Speedy's Washters. Now, I've never used these before. These are 5mm Washters. Just going to try one as an experiment. Got a feeling I'll be pestered by the skimmers, but who knows? I certainly smell. So, uh, mission accomplished, River Tench. Still cursing the loss of that carp, but that's fishing, I guess. You can't win them all, especially when they're really big fish like that, but uh, Now, in theory, I should have scaled down the, the hook size to match this smaller bait, but I'm uh, quite happy using a size 12. After all, I am targeting big fish. Oh, let's pop that out there. I haven't put another bag on. I suppose I sh should have done, but I'm confident that I can... If there's any more fish out there, I might be able to pick another one up. So yes, I'm very happy now. So, let's see what else I can get. Well, I'm still getting um, lots of little dips and bobs on that washer. The only other thing I've got, I think I've got some White Mill uh, Sonubate Semi Buoyant Bandoms, and I might just give one of them a try and see what happens. Um, or I might switch back to an 8mm pellet, not sure. Give this a fair trial, give this 10 or 15 minutes. And there's obviously still plenty of skimmers in the swim because I'm getting dips and bobs and... So there's still fish in my swim. So, yeah, I mean, I just watched my float lift out a good half inch then. But they're very quick, you can't hit them, I have tried. Well, my iPad ran out of battery and I'm running out of light. Um, but now is the critical time as far as I'm concerned and I've got a little uh, a Sonu Bates Bandom Wafter a 7mm white chocolate um, I put that on with a PVA bag and for the last few minutes, we'll see how that goes. The bats are out. One nearly flew six inches past my face. I can still see my float, so guess what? I'm still fishing.